So hi everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I've got a really cool tutorial for you, but it's something probably a little different than what everybody's used to. And I'm gonna show this off to the side as I talk. So, um, ever since I started the Bluetooth Low Energy and React Native series, people have been asking me, Dan, how do you make a peripheral device using an Arduino instead of always just doing the client side or having to go with Swift like I did before? And for a long time, I held off on making that video because really I wasn't sure how. But recently, this really cool device came out called the Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. It's just a really nice device. Um, they're not giving me any money, nothing like that. Um, but I realized with this device, because the ESP32 is actually built into it and I don't have to wire anything up, it's really quick and easy to code Bluetooth peripherals with this device. So. Um, today is my tutorial on how to build a Bluetooth low energy peripheral using the um, Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi. All right, a um, couple things before getting into this. To get started with Bluetooth low energy, there's not really much you have to know. There's a ton of depth if you really want to get into the peripheral side, and I'm not going to do that today. This video is mostly just meant to be a fun one to get you started. But two things I just want you to remember before we get started is first what a characteristic is, which is a, sorry, first what a service is, which is a grouping of characteristics, and what a characteristic is, and a characteristic is essentially a value on the Bluetooth low energy peripheral that you can read to, that you can, sorry, read from, write to, or it can give you notifications from the peripheral when um, something happens or there's an event. Okay, um, so knowing that, you pretty much need all you need to know to just get started. Not just that, I'm actually gonna link the sample project for the Arduino, as well as the React Native project that can link to the Arduino um, in the description. All right, and uh, let's get into the coding part. Okay, so let's get started. If you haven't already, go into the library manager and install the Arduino BLE library. At this point, what you're gonna to wanna to do is include the Arduino BLE library, the Arduino, uh, sorry, the servo library, and string and vector as well. After that, you can just instantiate your servo. We'll use it in a little bit and make some state for a previous angle. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is create some constants for your UUIDs. You can use any UUID you want, as long as it's a valid number. Uh, for a UUID and it's not something invalid. Uh, you also have to make sure that these are different and I'm going to create a UUID for a um, characteristic request and a characteristic response. Now creating the BLE service and the characteristics you can actually use is as easy as using the constructor and putting the service or characteristic inside. After that, um, we're gonna set our characteristics values uh, being BLE write and BLE notify, and four is the size of the payload that we're gonna be sending back and forth. So when set up, uh, which only gets fired once at the beginning of the program, I'm just gonna attach my servo and begin serial so I can do console logs. And then I'm gonna give the device a name, which is just gonna be my last name. Note that sometimes that fails and it says Arduino. Everything has that problem, even Swift, so just keep an eye out. It, the device may say Arduino that um, finds this instead of your name. Uh, but anyway, if the connection fails, I'm gonna do a forever loop and I'm gonna print that the um, connection failed. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to advertise the service and I'm gonna add the different characteristics to the service that I created. And finally, I'm gonna write a default value of 90 to the response characteristic so that um, when the app starts, it can have that 90 value right off the bat. And I'm gonna print that scanning started. Okay, let's try this out. So if I scan, you see the device is there. So far, so good. Okay, so now loop happens several times per second. And in loop, we're going to um, do the connection work. So we're gonna get our central uh, which is the device that we've connected to. And as soon as the central is no longer null, 
it means we've established a connection. So we can print that we've connected. After that, as long as the connection persists, we're going to have a, another uh, forever loop. And so if a value is written to the request, what we're gonna do is we're going to take the angle from there and we're gonna convert that to an integer because it sends an integer. I'm gonna write that value to the servo and then I'm gonna do a delay so the servo has some time to get to its destination before we uh, send another value. So I made a mistake in running this. Um, you have to modify those characteristic IDs to have that one. Uh, I made a little typo earlier, but this should fix it. Okay, so now if I connect, I should be able to move it around. I don't get a response, so the degrees don't change, but I am able to move the motor as you can see here. Okay, so writing a response to move the motor is really easy. All we have to do is on our response characteristic, we just have to set the value of the angle that we just wrote. Okay, so let's see how that works. And now if we move things, you can see that the motor moves along with it and sends us back the number of degrees. This was pretty cool, guys. I hope you appreciated it. I had a lot of fun with it. And um, as always, happy hacking.